Hey everyone, this is Ben Beck with you in the Midwest Model Shop. So in today's episode, we are announcing our next build. This is CV6 USS Enterprise by Trumpeter in 1200 scale. Uh, I decided today that I would go ahead and announce this kit because I have basically all of the stuff. But if you want to see this kit built, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. I'm currently finishing up builds of the Titanic, if you're familiar with my channel. And I will finish Titanic, both of them, before I begin this kit. However, there are uh, really cool options out there in the detail market world that you might want to see that I hopefully have most of. And so you can go ahead and check that out and decide if that's something for you that you want to acquire to start building now or down the road. All right, so we're also going to do a little three-part episode here. A good friend of mine suggested I think it's a good idea to keep things straight. So today's episode, we're just going to go ahead and look at the kit. So we'll do a nice little review of that. We're also going to take a look at my reference material that I got here. This is Legends of Warfare CV6 USS Enterprise. It is by David Doyle. And the coolest part about it is it's signed right here to Ben at the Midwest Model Shop by David Doyle. That's a neat little story. We'll talk about that later. And then we'll do a separate episode on our detail upsets, right? So here we have by KA Models, the Mark 1 detail set for USS Enterprise. A lot of really cool stuff. This has been out for a little while. I've had this probably for four or five months, I guess. I'm not really sure anymore. And then I also just got in the mail the other day by Pontos, lots of photo etch in here. Their detail upset for Enterprise. Um, these kits have some things that are the same that repeat and then a lot of stuff is different and there's a lot more photo etch in the Ponto set than in the uh, KA set. Uh, so unlike Titanic, well no I guess kind of like Titanic, and you would, you'll see there's, there's, there's pros and cons to both and there's a reason to have both of these detail sets. Pretty awesome. So all right let's get into it today. Let's go ahead and get this big box open and check it out. All right so typical of Trumpeter you get a giant giant box and in the giant giant box you get more boxes first thing we have right here on top is our instruction manual we'll flip through that quickly then you get a big sheet of decals and we'll take a look and talk about that too we've got some comments about that and then we have our little color code guide that we got right here and this also real quick I'm going to throw it out here this deck blue see how nice and dark that is um, I did a similar thing on the Missouri and I had a gentleman tell me he didn't like that I painted the deck black the deck is not black it's a very very dark deck blue and in the Pontos cat I ordered their pre-stained deck blue and although the photos look like their light blue like my shirt it's not it's 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 very dark like this it's the appropriate color so we'll get to that when we get to that episode all right so four boxes this is the haul um yeah let's go ahead and start with pulling the haul out all right typical of any trumpeter trumpeter haul i could barely fit it in the shop shot and had to move the camera all the way back but you do get a nice single piece haul one seam at the bottom right here minimal cleanup um and it's it's cool because it's a different shape, right? I mean, the aircraft carriers back then had different shapes. I was surprised at how low, how thin the uh, hull is, I guess, in height. I mean, we got to build a whole bunch up and everything, right? But I'm used to working Titanic in Missouri uh, and, and bigger ships, and this is just, uh, it, it's different. Let's go ahead real quick here and slide Titanic over in front just so you can see the difference in size. Okay, I think you can see here, so Titanic is 53 inches long, same as the USS Missouri. This hull is not quite the same length. We're a little bit shorter. We're probably coming in at 49, maybe 50 inches. I know the dimensions are in the box, but, you know, Titanic's older, and man, is she big. Uh, it looks like this is the same width, though. Might be slightly wider deck here. Uh, but definitely way, way taller, right? I mean, anyway. So yeah, let's take a couple of quick close-ups here of the hull. All right, up on the bow here, you've got a handful of portholes and some little detail. If we zoom in, 
you can see that we've got our slightly oblong ob oblong oblong portholes right that's just a result of the way that um, the mold is made there's not a lot you can do about it except fix it and what I do like is the little eyebrows are already pre-molded on a lot of the I haven't looked but I'm sure Kay and Pontos included these I don't like to scrape those off because putting a fiddly part like that back on is really difficult and look at it they, they crushed it it's killer looks really good as we move along the portholes become sorry they become the correct shape uh, as you're perpendicular to the hull and you got the little eyebrows and they look nice. Uh, it's a smooth hull though, no hull plating, no, no lines or anything like that in it. All right, moving back over here to the fantail, and I apologize, I'm trying to keep things in focus. Uh, we've got lots of neat stuff happening on the bottom here. There's a little bit of a raised seam right there, no problem, and it curves around. We get rid of that. Um, all of our contact points here to hold on to the uh, shaft for the propeller are raised and uh, they've got like this cool little oval detail. I think that's really nice. Uh, we've got back here on the fantail, obviously there'll be a little door right there. A couple other little spots. This is going to be for the rudder. Um, really that's it. It's pretty simple. Nice, clean looking haul. Uh, I would call this a good palette to begin doing whatever you wanted to on it. There's a bit of a raised detail right here and I think the, the biggest headache right off the gate is going to be um, correcting, zoom in here, the shape of these portholes because they're, they're oblong. So what I probably do is just fill them in and then take a drill bit that's the right size, drill in perpendicular to the hole or the hull surface and you'll end up with the, with the right shape. Now, as far as like the profile of the hull goes, I'm talking about this shape. Is this right? Does this come down thin enough? I don't know. Um, and honestly, I don't care. Uh, I'm probably, I'm thinking about doing a water line model of this and actually doing my first ever seascape and setting this down in it. Um, I have reservations about it because you'll lose all of this wonderful fun detail back here. We'll still build all of that, but yeah, I think we might display this in the water. All right, let's go ahead and open up the boxes. Okay, here's our first box and it is labeled A. Uh, I misspoke earlier when I said there was four big boxes. There's actually five. There's a fifth one underneath here that I forgot all about. So when we pop it open, here is our first bit of tons of stuff. So we got parts for some of the ship's boats that from here actually look really good. And check that out. They molded the shaft on and the rudder and the little propeller. That is outstanding. That's really cool. Um, unfortunately, we'll see later on the top is is poorly done but this bottom part's really nice trumpeter did a really good job there the I'll, I'll just say it right now in case you don't know the the lifeboats or the shift boats the ship's boats something went sideways with the way they detailed them uh, it's like the weakest point of the kit for some reason all right then we get into a lot of like the structure for the fantail and the rigging and then you got all the superstructure big hull plates and sides. There's a lot of large pieces in this kit. Here's some of our anti-aircraft gun tubs. Familiar with that, having flashbacks to the uh, Missouri. Here's the nameplate, which is nice. More gun tubs, more details, more boat stuff. Again, with the boats, even though the, the everything from here up is awful and everything from here down is like really nice. We'll do a compare and contrast video when we get to it on that point. Big pieces again for the side of the ship, probably along the hangar deck. Uh, I think I'm going to do, the. I want to detail the inside of the hangar deck. Here, here we go. Here's some more of the ship boats deals that were going on here. And look at, look at this. That's bad. I don't know what happened, Trumpeter. Everything else about this kit I think is a grand slam and then something here went sideways. Uh, we've got some of our anti-aircraft guns. 
um, depending on which version you use. It's like some Bofors. Interesting things here, we'll get to that. You get two packages of those. Uh, let's see, then we're moving on just to more big heavy pieces. Looks like some hanger doors here, a bulkhead. More bulkheads, more doors. And then here we're on the deck. We got the deck elevators. These are big pieces. These are nicely detailed. Even through the plastic, you could see everything right there. Well done, Trumpeter. That's nice. You got some stuff here. And then that is the end of box A. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, I skipped straight to box D because it's down underneath everything there. And inside you get all these deck pieces basically two sets of deck right so here this is looking like our hanger deck area here and there's one two and then three pieces here this is like up on the folksole and we're going to be doing a ton of work with this on the ponto stuff but it's nicely detailed again i think i i think trumpeter makes excellent kits right out of the box so there's no reason not to build them straight out of the box here's the i believe this is the bow it's got the cool curved radius there for everybody to take off of if we look closely here lots of detail already built in and then you get uh, further aft you've got this little clever click together arrangement here and our aft stern piece for the deck same thing we'll see how well it does um, going together but only one seam in the wooden on the deck on top i think that's really clever here's our fantail or hopefully you don't end up short if you're on final approach and again through the plastic even very nice detail you've got the wood and all of their your tie downs um, extremely well molded this is a nice thick beefy piece here i think this is i think this is really well done here uh oh and then so this would be the hanger deck can you see the deck plates I don't know how accurate that is. The last uh, hangar deck I was in was the USS Midway in um, San Diego, and as far as I could tell, it was just concrete floor. Looks like we got steel plates there. Is that accurate? I don't know. Uh, we'll try and figure it out. Even if it's not accurate, it's a nice effort to put some sort of detail there that really ultimately you're, you're not even going to see when this is all done. All right, pressing on. All right, here we are. This is the smallest box in the whole kit, box B. And I'm pretty sure it's full of all kinds of fun details. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, all right, let's start on the right. Oh, grab two extra things. Here are your aircraft. So this looks like our Wildcats. Everything's molded in clear. And that's so you could do an interior... Well, it's not so you could do interior. It's so that the canopy and everything ends up being the way that uh, it should be. These are fun little kits. I'm excited about putting them together. Then we've got, I think these are Avengers. Again, nice panel lines. Uh, good little detail, all done and clear. So the canopy, there's a canopy right there, is clear. We'll be able to see the entire interiors. We've got details to build entire interiors for these. I don't have to scratch build it like I did on the Arizona. And we'll be putting those together. And then, I think, uh, TBF Avengers, I'm not sure. It's been a minute since I've done my World War II Navy aircraft. But again, very nice clear canopy right there. These, these are cool. These are very cool. I think Trumpeter's only gotten better and better at, at making these. And I think you get so five, five, and five, 15. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, your life rafts, a piece of string or hair from somebody. And then we're starting to get into the anti-aircraft gun tubs here for the 40 millimeter Bofors. Then we've got a bunch of the same over and over and over again. Well, not over and over. So here's our, some of our ship screws some doors, some of this detail stuff. I, 
if for those of you who are like, I don't want to build anything, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing stuff, I don't like tiny parts, so far this is a great kit for that. I mean, yeah, there's a small part, that light, but like look at my finger, it's, it's really not that small. I, I've, I've noticed that so far there's nothing really tiny on this kit. Uh, except maybe right here, your your Orlikin cannons, those are kind of small. But look, they're already molded together m to the mount. I mean, just snip it off right there, paint it. Paint it on here first. Paint it on the sprue, snip it off at the bottom, install it. You're done. Nice. Bunch of little parts and racks here. I think this is for the boats. Some other beams, a paravein, just just cool. Then here's the superstructure. I is it? Yeah, it's pre-molded. Look at this. This is incredible. I don't know how they did this. There's no seam. It's one piece already done and ready to go. No halves. That's cool. And then we've got a big plate, and it's got a cutout in the corner there. So this is for something. All right, so yeah, this is basically your little details. We'll see how much worse it gets in the other box here. Pressing on. All right, last box. C, this was, I don't know, middle-sized or whatever. About a foot and a half long. And here we go. All right, what do we have in here? So this is more hangar deck, superstructure side, big pieces. Here we've got some of the... Uh, the details for the holding the propeller shafts. So this is nice. Looks like they're flush mounted and they'll sit down into that nice oval shape and look really good. That's a nice detail. Looking forward to that. Here's some more of the ship boats. Again, I, I don't know what this is supposed to represent here. I don't know what happened. This is this is disappointing. This piece is disappointing. Everything underneath is incredible. Uh, but fortunately we'll fix this with some detail sets. And we've got some other stuff there. More big pieces. Again, superstructure sides, I guess. I'm calling it superstructure. That's, that's probably not right. This is just all along the edge of the hangar deck. And these tracks here, I'm guessing, have to do with the elevators. All right, more gun tubs. More framing for supporting the deck. This is the top where the funnel area goes on the superstructure. More large pieces. Here's the keels that run along on the side. They are not thick. That's incredible. They're thin. That's good. All right. Yeah, and then we just got a bunch of large, lots of large pieces here. And then here's part of the mast for the our radar detail here. This is quickly turn into a I will recommend this for those who have big fingers and poor dexterity and bad vision kit this might actually be for you um, I don't know what these things are but we're gonna find out again large pieces here I like this whoa many large pieces all right so this is gonna go on the side of the hall I think um, for supporting the superstructure and then we've got some more big chunks and that's it and then down in here i see photo etch oh and wire look at that so i think this is for the degaussing wire to run around the edge of the ship it's pretty thick and big uh you could use it it's fine i don't know that we will um but i will hang on to it this is a great every modeler can use this stuff and then we've got the chain that's awesome very nice chain looks to scale We'll take a closer look at it when we get into the build. And then we've got our prototypical trumpeter photo etch enhancements. Now, here's what I have to say about trumpeter's photo etch. I love that they include it, and I love that it's thicker. It's If you're not used to photo etch or you have trouble with it, um, this stuff's really easy to work with because it's on the thicker side. And so you'll have better luck, especially if you're new. Uh, the downside to it is, is it usually doesn't have quite as much detail um, like this is a half etch usually they don't really have any half etches anywhere but I always keep this stuff especially all the ladders I have the leftovers from Arizona and Missouri over there because 
you never know when you're gonna need one of these parts, especially if your detail set screws up. Like these ladders are, are just about as good as anything you'll get from Pontos and KA. Pontos and KA stuff's better, but if you ruin one, you know, or you wanna practice, use one of these first. They're heavy duty, they're pretty simple. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's good photo etch. They have all their railing. Typically, now like on Arizona, they didn't provide enough railing or even tell you where it went. I always keep this stuff in case you mess up the aftermarket PE. Uh, then you've got it here. Oh, there you go. So you do have to put the little shields on the front of the Orlick and Cannons, but it's ready to go. Scale thickness. It looks nice. Nothing wrong with it. What we got here? Ooh, something small. So this even says 1200 Hornet on there. So they are reusing some of the pieces from Hornet. And why not? They're the same class ship. And we got a bunch of our little radar detail here. This might be a little thinner, but again, it's, it's, I think it's the same thickness. You're just getting into, you know, smaller parts. Good, good stuff. And then we've got a ton of railing. And then some more railing with the, uh, looks like some netting and things like that. And then some cranes and some big plates here. This looks cool. I wonder if this is like a steel plate and then you fold the rail up, if that's what that even is. I don't know. But well thought out, right? It's already pre-attached for those of you who have a great disdain for putting photo watch railing on. All right. And that is it for our last box. So let's put this back and then we'll look at the decals, instructions and stuff. All right, let's start off here with the decal sheet. And I apologize about a little bit of the glare, but we'll move in closer to see some of this stuff. So right away at the top, just lots of deck centering lines right here. Uh, they're just white. We're gonna end up painting those, but they do provide them if you don't wanna paint them. And then you've got your white areas that go around uh, the elevators, and then of course your big sixes. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, for those, this, look look at my hand. Look how big that six is. It looks like six six right now. Huge. Uh, pro tip for those of you who are like, I don't know if I wanna glue this big thing down and I'm not sure and blah, blah. Take this to a copy machine or your copier and zip off a, uh, a three or four copies of it on a copy machine. You'll have a piece of paper, cut out the six out of your piece of paper. You'll have a negative, you'll have to save this space. Set that on the deck where you want to go. Very carefully mark it off and look at all these sharp, everything's a sharp angle. You can mask this off and just paint it if you don't want to use decal. I mean, there's no reason not to try and do that. All right, uh, down here. So here's all of your decals for your aircraft. So we got our Wildcat, our SBD3s, and the TBD. So I halfway got those right. Um, lots of numbers. The concern that I have when I saw these was like 12 and 13 here. I know right away they intend for you to put this 13 on the wings and the star right here, 12 on the side. Uh, they are way out of scale. We, I've already discussed this in my model club. The the 12 here is, it, maybe you could put that on the wing. These are way too big. And this situation gets even worse. I'm not sure what's going on there with the sizing. Uh, so we may have to resort to some sort of aftermarket or painting them ourselves or figuring out, we'll figure out something else. But this is, they're too big. Uh, but this is what you get for decals, which is nice. I think most importantly, you got a few American flags, uh, your Union Jack, and you've got your smaller sixes that go, can we see that here? Those sixes that go on the hull. So the ship decals are adequate. Um, the, the, the airplane stuff, not so much. We'll have to sort that out. Okay, let's go to the next thing. All right, uh, I found one additional piece of paper, kind of a little advertisement deal here, showing where a lot of that photo etch goes and the parts that you've got, and it's cool. I mean, it's nice to see where all of this stuff ends up at, 
and how much photo etch are you really getting into if you really don't enjoy photo etch. Uh, the superstructure area has probably got the most, and really, it's just not bad at all. I, again, excellent kit out of the box for the most part, with the exception being uh, decals. So here's your little paint guide that they give you. Um, so again here, like, uh, they're telling you 21. Where's our 12 and 13 part? Here we go. Like, they want those 13s to go on the wings, and they're just massive. They're, 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 I don't know what happened there. They didn't get scaled down the way that they were supposed to. But this is a nice little guide uh, to show you how to, how to paint it. Uh, these are the colors that they are calling out for and the references there. It's funny to me that Model Master is even being referenced. I guess some of us still have some of these colors left. Uh, but I, it's good that everything else is on there. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, let's take a look at the instructions. All right, here is your trumpeter instruction manual. Right away opened up, you're going to go ahead and get all of your parts. For those of you who want to inventory everything, uh, or you could be like me and live on the edge and just assume they got it right and it's all in the box. All right, looks like here we are at step one. Uh, right away I'm seeing make holes. There's some cut and removes, and then we launch right away into building our bofers and a couple of the direction finders. They tell you to make six of these right away. Um, nice, clear, easy to understand, nice stuff. All right, then we go right back out to the hall and we begin by putting all of that detail on on the bottom there. It looks a little busy, but I, everything's kind of like in a nice orderly fashion showing, I like, I like the drop down arrow showing exactly where it's supposed to go. Minimizing the chances of you screwing up. Uh, I didn't say you wouldn't, I, I, I screw up all the time, but you know, minimizing, right? Minimizing. Oh, there's the anchor, that's cool. Make two of those, very nicely done. All right, and then we've got some internal supports. Uh, and then we've got a couple of spotlights, searchlights to tell you to make two. Then we're moving right up to the, uh, looks like our poop foxhole And the internal deck. I like that. Okay, and then where to put those parts on the hull? This is the degaussing line. Yeah, brass wire. They want you to run their black brass wire around it. They give you a ton of it. Uh, we'll be utilizing something a little bit more accurate and to scale from the photo etch kit. But if you use the kit's brass wire, it's big and thick. It'll be easy to work with, and it will depict something interesting to look at. And and you know, folks will be able to figure out. Well, you'll be able to tell them what is the degaussing line. All right, and then we start putting together big pieces of plastic. Looks like so these are these are ammunition tubs. Drop into place. More of the deck goes together. It looks like they've yeah right here. This is where they tell you just to drop the two deck halves together, and then you're putting some detail on the bottom. Oh, there's that big huge funny thing that I was like, I don't know what that is, Z3, Z3 for those of you in the UK. Drops in right there, it's got that cutout. All right. More large pieces, one of the guns. Looks like we're attaching our paravanes to the side here. This is, um, oh, I forget the name of that gun. The Chicago piano thing, right? I think that's what they are. We'll have to do something about these ship's boats. This, These are okay. The ones where the top is just, you're just going to sit in it. Those look. Those are going to look good. Those are excellent out of the box. All right. And then lots and lots of interior detail. Um, and, and then right here, here's hangar bay doors. I want my hangar open, I think. If it... I mean, the easy thing to do is go ahead and button it all up. You don't have to worry about any of the stuff in the inside, and you can move right along on your build. Uh, I'm going to, I think right now I'm going to plan on leaving this open, and I'm going to try to light the inside appropriately. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that. That's all down the road. 
Here's the bane of my existence, Orlikon cannons. But again, Trumpeter made it easy. Looks like it's just a couple of parts to assemble. Here we've got a bunch of things going together. And I like, this is all big sub-assemblies. This is really important. Um, we'll see how well they fit together. But to, to have a big kit like this in front of you takes up a lot of room. Um, Titanic's kind of a pain right now because you get to a point where very quickly you need the whole ship in front of you. Uh, to just be able to work in sub-assemblies that are this big and then stick them on the hull, that's, that's, that's really nice. So it looks like we're going to continue to do more of that and more. Again, just big pieces. Well, here we got a complicated page. we got a lot of stuff happening over here. This is that part that goes underneath the superstructure, I believe. And then we're attaching more of it. And then we got our boats. These are the boats where I don't know what happened. These top parts here. Those are just not even close to forget historically accurate. They don't even they don't even look good. I don't know what happened there. But those have all been corrected in our detail sets that we've got. So that's not gonna be an issue for us. Uh, yeah, I wish you're getting some photo etch. Very nice. You got photo etch. This might be a little tricky for some of you, but just bend that over a little dome, and then you could drop it down over the top of where the funnel's um, exhaust. Again, straight out of the box from Trumpeter. Really nice. I'm going to work on a mass and the radar that they provide. This is cool because obviously this is all just a big sub-assembly that you can manipulate easily on the shelf in front of you. Things start to get a little more complicated as you put it together, but we're just slapping on little bits and pieces of detail. And again, arrows clearly showing t with exactly where they intend for you to put it. So if that's wrong, that's on Pontos, right? And we got some sub-assemblies, and then we get over here where we're starting to drop. So you've already got the, the hull's already, I like this because when you, you basically have a big box at this point once you glue this deck down, and now you've got a rigid surface. So easy move around, it's not wiggling, the sides aren't moving on you, and you can go ahead and secure all your stuff to the forecastle up here. Put all that detail in. Same with the fantail. And then you're just dropping all these pieces in. Very clever. And then, boom. Here's where all those sub-assemblies start to get dropped into place individually. I like this because the whole thing's steady. Uh, you should be able to pre-fit everything and decide if you know it's lining up the way that you want. That's really important. And we do some airplane assembly here. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So those pieces, I didn't know what they were. You put your cannons on top of that, your big five inch guns. Five inch? I think those are five inch. This, you gotta watch the, um, what year you decide you're, you're modeling the ship after, whether you're including these or not. Eventually they were removed. Oh, I got a loose, loose piece of paper in here. Or I have a duplicate? No, I don't know. I have a loose piece of paper. So now the deck is open, right? This is the hangar deck, and you're putting... This is nice. I mean, they're including the details that go across to the top. Look at here, a nice little inset showing where the PE goes. Now, it doesn't show where this inset is at. Oh, right here. I think we're, happy, we're right above it right here. So that's... Very helpful. Thank you, Trumpeter. All right, so this piece of paper was sitting, so it goes, it goes page 37, 38, but this piece of paper was slid in there. This looks like a separate sheet. Uh, it just says pipe assembly for your degaussing wires, your brass wires. So this is a breakdown from earlier on in the build showing you exactly where they intend for you to have all this to go. So that's a very nice touch. All right. Uh, assemble your airplanes and then you're taking the main deck and dropping it down top of this. This would be about time you're buttoning it all up. And then on the last page, well it's done, right? Easy peasy. Taking your big sub-assemblies, 
and point them into position and you are set. Don't forget the name plate right there. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is CV6 by Trumpeter. Um, I'm super excited about this build and I can't wait to finish Titanic, both of them, and then we'll start this one. So uh, next week probably, because I just have very limited times off between work trips here. That's why I'm trying to get this out. I will go ahead and we will review probably next the Pontos detail set, and then we'll take a little break and we'll review the Mark I detail set. Oh, the book. Let's talk about the book. All right, here's my book, Legends of Warfare, USS Enterprise CV-6, all right? The Big E from Doolittle Raid, Midway and Santa Cruz to Guadalcanal and Liet. So, by David Doyle. I, this guy does a ton of reference books uh, on all kinds of military subjects. And I was really on the struggle bus finding a solid book that I was going to be happy with uh, on Enterprise. And I went to my local model show that uh, our club hosts. And this guy, David Doyle, is there with all of his books. And he had one copy of this thing sitting there. I could not believe it. His wife's like, oh, would you like to buy this? And I, I didn't know who any of these people were at the time. Like, yeah, I'd, this is really saving my, my rear end here because I don't have any good reference material yet for this build, and I'm super, super excited about it. And she's like, oh, well, this book's by my husband, and he's standing right there. I'm like, what? So I, I chit-chatted with uh, David. He was a very nice man. Um, he was surprised that I wanted his autograph for some reason, but uh, I did, and he signed the book. And here we go. So there's, you know, here's the breakdown on all of the stuff right here. And really the big thing for me is I wanted tons and tons and tons of reference photos. And I also wanted, because I'm thinking about doing a sea base for it here and putting it in the water, it's important to note, and there's several pictures here that like, for example, the water it kind of like breaks off the bow and does all this, but right here is where the real wake starts. It's like a third of the way back is where you see wake coming off of the ship uh, versus right on the bow, which is what you would normally think. So, um, oh, and he left me a little, uh, if you want to get this, go to daviddoylebooks.com, threw that in there for me. But just, you know, a ton of assembly photographs. Oh, there's our... There's our deck plates that I was wondering about inside of the hangar bay. So that is the right shape. Good job, trumpeter. Here's pictures of the bow. Looks like our bow might be a little bit thicker. Could come to a, a little bit more of a point. And if there's plenty of plastic there, we might just reshape it to mimic that for those who are concerned about it. There's one of the weld lines. So th this book is just here because I need a ton of reference for what's going on. I, I just, um, it helps to be able to identify things and know what is what, halfway what it looked like. Um, here's our quadruple 1.1 inch gun mounts. I couldn't remember the name of earlier. Here we go. Inside of the hangar bay, here's some more of the detail in case you're wondering what it looked like. And then this is after the Big E took a few hits, got some damage. So just a plethora of detail here. Just, in, just absolutely invaluable. And with the different years and everything like that. So anyway, um, oh, and like right here, see how the water's breaking, but it's like further back. Same with right here. Comes off the bow and then here's where the big wave starts. It's important to have these kind of references like that. So, oh, whoa. Up here as well. All right, so anyway, um, just I'm super excited to have this book here. And then uh, there's David. He looks just like that, believe it or not. All right, so anyway, that's it, folks. This is going to wrap up for this episode, intro to the tight, er, USS Enterprise CV-6. Um, again, please like and subscribe. The next two videos will cover the Pontos and the KA detail set. And when Titanic's done, we're building the Big E. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.